Hello my friends, welcome again to the Magister Klaus channel. I am here with a new video for you and today is a special day as summer is almost at the end and we are entering the time of autumn and of Halloween for some. Uh, today is also, or tonight, uh, we have a full moon which is uh, uh, always time for rituals uh, related to maybe uh, moon goddess or to Lilith and so on and to all rituals where you need to do uh, something prosperous for you, money rituals, love rituals, uh, these types of uh, operations are really good to have today or tonight. But. My video uh, is maybe related to something else uh, and uh, today uh, those uh, operations that I would like to speak about are or maybe shouldn't be performed. They should be performed uh, during uh, new moon, uh, during the darkest of the nights uh, in, the, in the whole month. I would like to speak about art of necromancy. Uh, it is generally advised that these uh, sh operations should be done when the month is waning, so not today, but maybe slowly you can start tomorrow. <laughs> okay, so why do I want to speak about necromancy or what it is, what does it represent? So maybe it's good to just name a few uh, words that uh, can give us this answer. Necromancia is a Latin term, but as with uh, many other etymologies, it comes from the Greek origin of necromantea. Uh, these are practically two words uh, together. Uh, necros means dead body, and mantea means divination. So uh, practically uh, necromancy means divinations from the dead bodies or from something like from the corpses and to work with uh, where we can work with uh, dead spirits. It's very, very old uh, tradition, practically uh, the first uh, shamanistic traditions uh, from the Neolithic times were the rites of for the dead and uh, uh, they are also I think uh, whole necromancy or necrom uh, is very similar to the word uh, Goetia or Goetia because of course Goetia means sorcery but if we go a little bit deeper uh, the origin of the uh, or the source of the name Goetia might be uh, so-called Greek Gauss, with mean which means to lament, lamentations, lamentations over the dead. Uh, in the sixth century before uh, current era, uh, in Hellenistic times, Goetia or Go uh, Goetia is replaced by another name uh, due to the Persian influence, uh, Magia, which means magic. So Goetia is older term. Uh, it, it's used probably before the sixth century uh, of, of the current era. Uh, another world uh, which is close to necromancy and to this uh, Goet old Goetia is uh, world uh, Kton. Or Kton, it's, uh, in Greek it means earth, and uh, Ktonios means uh, in the earth, from the earth. So sometimes you can hear that adepts working with necromancy are working with uh, Ktonic powers or Ktonic energies. So we mean the energies from the earth. The earth is uh, as an element uh, closely related to uh, to the to the death. Necromancy as an art was practiced practically in old ancient cultures, whether it's in Egypt, in uh, Canaanite societies, in Sumeria, and of course uh, we have more sources and informations about uh, the earliest necromancy practices from Hellenistic times, 
uh, Homer in his Odyssey is mentioning uh, Circe, which is uh, which was a powerful sorceress that uh, met Odysseus uh, in the underworld. Uh, also, uh, these necromantic rites, these, these burial rites, working with the energies of the dead, divinations from the dead, are closely related with a very popular goddess uh, in Hellenistic times. Uh, in Greece it was Kybele. Kybele was a ktonic cult, uh, which uh, Kybele was also understood as a later on a Sibele in, in, in the Roman, uh, Romanian Empire and it was also quite popular cult and in Latin uh, with Kibele we understand uh, another word which is uh, close to her it's, it's the world of Magna Mater so, so the Great Mother uh, this really shows us that uh, the cult of uh, Kibele is very old practically older than Hellenistic culture. It's, it's, it has probably Neolithic roots with the mother as a mother of all, uh, of all gods. Uh, Kibele is understood as this. Also, Kibele is understood as a mother of all heroes. So uh, it means those uh, uh, entities, deities, gods that, uh, that came from, uh, from her. When we speak about Kibele as a goddess of the ectonic cult, uh, under these ectonic energies we have to understand not only energies of death, but also the uh, energies of rebirth. Mystically speaking, uh, mother of the god of the of the, of the gods, like uh, Kibele or Great Mother has a womb uh, in which uh, everything is being born from and also re uh, renewed. Uh, she comes from earth, she comes from these ketonic energies. Uh, those that work with necromantic uh, powers uh, wanted to achieve, uh, of course, wisdoms of the death, uh, wisdoms of their uh, ancestors, and also uh, wanted to uh, understand uh, what will happen after after your death uh, there is a lot of uh, theological and religionistic uh, information about the underworld of the hellenistic gods but uh, we can we can see that these rituals are closely related to the rituals of life and death with the rise of the Christianity, of course, and with the fall of the Roman Empire, the cult of Kibele went uh, practically extinct. But the rituals uh, were practically absorbed uh, in the early medieval and later on, <coughs> or uh, early medieval and later on, even Renaissance times. Uh, cults of uh, Kibele, the words like Goetia, uh, are later roots for the um, Renaissance grimoires that, that came later. Uh, it's interesting to say that uh, we can find a few first necromantic uh, grimoires that uh, predate, uh, I would say, uh, current uh, Ars Goetia uh, books and, uh, uh, for example, uh, Clavicles of Solomon. One of the most famous necromantic uh, books or books about necromancy is a so-called uh, Munich Handbook of Necromancy. It's a work uh, from the 15th century uh, by a German magician, uh, but un no, we do not know his name. Uh, this uh, book uh, is not fully translated but uh, can be uh, found uh, in uh, the bibliotheque or library of, uh, of Munich. Uh, unfortunately full English translation still does not exist but if you are interested to read uh, at least uh, excerpts of it I would uh, recommend to you to read a book from by Richard uh, Kickhefer uh, it's called Forbidden Rights and I think it was published in 1988.
1998 and still can be found on Amazon. Uh, and I think there is a later on there exists also Russian translation from Latin. It was published in 2019, but I do not have a link to it. Uh, what is interested? Uh, what is interesting is that uh, this Munich manual of demonic magic uh, contains uh, also demonic entities that are that can be later found in Ars Goetia. Uh, naming uh, Barbarus, uh, Volach, uh, Alucor, but also others uh, that are not found in Ars Goetia, like uh, uh, Count Otius, uh, Prince Taub, uh, Duke Generon. Uh, they name practically 11, 11 of these uh, entities. Uh, the whole book uh, is interesting because it provides a lot of rituals uh, related practically to necromancy. What does it represent? Uh, illusionistic or illusionist spells. Uh, there is a ritual how to uh, create your own castle with your own knights and uh, the castle can last for 24 hours. Uh, I would say that uh, this means that uh, it's very related to creation of your own very strong astral temple or secure, secured place uh, in some kind of spiritual realm. Uh, there are psychological spells, how to get love, how to influence someone. Uh, I would say these rituals are really black magic uh, because uh, in these rituals, you are not asking the, the object of the, of the ritual for his uh, will. You just force him through the powers of demonic entities to do what you, uh, what you wish from them. And uh, there are also divinatory uh, rituals and actions that are intended to extract some kind of information from the future or from the past. Uh, um, also, there is like a very interesting ritual uh, called the uh, ritual of uh, first mirror of Lilith. <laughs> uh, it's, uh, it's, it's a ritual how to create uh, practically uh, a spell to get the images uh, and uh, to to uh, to uh, get the contact names of uh, Lilith servants. Uh, so uh, also also this is quite uh, quite interesting. Um, other uh, very, uh, but maybe if I can just add, uh, if we read this type of manual, and also there is another one uh, very. Uh, at, from the similar time, but uh, a little bit different, but also uh, interesting one, uh, from uh, which was found in the or which originated from the Medici's library. Medici's was a famous noble house in in, uh, in medieval and uh, uh, I'm sorry, in Renaissance Italy. Uh, the uh, the manual uh, contains a lot of similar information as the Munich manual, but also a different one, different rights. It's called uh, Fasciculus Rerum Geomanticarum uh, and uh, currently can be still found uh, in uh, Biblioteca Medicea Laurenziana in Italy. Uh, we, when we look at these uh, manuals, uh, uh, they are written in Latin but this uh, this latin is a little bit i would say like barbaric uh, it, it contains a lot of failures mistakes uh, it seems that it was created by some lower clergy which is interesting because at the time who understood latin of course it must have been from the clergy uh, and uh, it's interesting to know that a lot of clergy uh, uh, practically uh, that perform daily Christian and Roman Catholic rites uh, were also uh, working with this kind of uh, texts and creating these texts. And uh, interesting is also that these texts later on uh, 
were popular by their patrons, for example, by the Medici family. Medici family had also popes, I think two or three <laughs> during the Renaissance times. So, um, uh, of course, at that time, to perform such necromantic ritual was uh, forbidden and uh, you could uh, be burned in the stake. But anyway, uh, when, we, when we look at this, we can see that those that were writing these type of books were uh, experience you, uh, experienced uh, in the way how, for example, Roman Catholic Mass should go, you have, uh, you have, uh, should, uh, should be performed. So these, these people were, uh, or these authors were creating these rituals in very similar ways, but for the demons and uh, with the demons. Um, in case of the uh, Munich Manual of uh, Demonology, uh, we, uh, the first part of this book is missing, like the missing like uh, initial several pages that, um, but the rest of the manual is uh, in a solid form. Uh, it is believed that it was done because of the, uh, to, to avoid inquisition, so they replaced first few pages by some, by some absolutely different text, so if someone would open the book, he would see first few first pages uh, practically about something else and after after several pages they would see the real content of it but these books were popular uh, they were bought uh, by very famous uh, noble houses in that time uh, there is a ritual in this medici codex not the munich one but for the from the uh, the medici codex uh, codex uh, that is uh, named an experiment by uh, michael scott the necromancer or Michael Scotus. Uh, we believe this is a pseudonym for the author. Uh, in this ritual he tries to uh, require the services of, uh, of a dead uh, spirit which is already dead and uh, this spirit should have been some kind of uh, tutor to him in the way of the occult. And uh, in this ritual that takes several days of preparation, summoning of demons, uh, blood offerings, he asks uh, to be provided by a spirit of the dead, a tutor that can help him within 30 days to provide, uh, to teach him about everything that is required. And uh, later on, after these 30 days, the tutor is relieved from the services, but can be later on maybe summoned again. Uh, it's interesting like to have this, <laughs> to, to have su such kind of, of, of teacher that you can maybe summon. I, I never tried this type of ritual, but uh, who knows, uh, if, we, if, you, if you really try, maybe uh, instead of looking Internet or watching my videos, you can. Uh, I'm not laughing. It's, it's it might be possible that you will be able to summon your own uh, your own tutor, uh, Michael Scotus or Michael Scott. Uh, later on, announces in the book that it was a success. Uh, Later on, uh, there are uh, several books, of course, related to necromancy. We believe that from these books, uh, the names that are mentioned here, uh, Ars Goetia, for example, Mai used a lot of names from these older or, or older sources. Uh, I do have a copy of a very nice book, uh, which was re released quite recently. It's called Clavis Goetica. Uh, it was released by Hadean Press, and uh, it mentions uh, several uh, sources and uh, newly found uh, or newly translated documents or necromantic books. One of them is so-called Ars uh, Pythonica, uh, and uh, uh, the date of the origin is uh, expected like 1700. Uh, and 50, 1750. Uh, the manuscript source still, the original, can be found in Germany in University Leipzig. 
and uh, uh, it's very uh, small document it has only eight pages but i do have the translations here why do i mention it uh, although this is very small uh, document uh, or um, it uh, describes a ritual of uh, how to divine a future or any kind of required information from a human skull you have to have human skull uh, which you uh, of course like uh, baptize uh, for, uh, by uh, through the powers of four demons uh, the the origin of the, if these demons is also unknown uh, in other books or sources but these four demons are called uh, Cortornifer, Forfornifer, Angerion and Cornigerion. Uh, what is interesting is that these four names might have an interesting etymology. Uh, for example, Cortornifer uh, might be related to uh, to the core in Latin means heart. Uh, for fornifer, it means fork. Yeah, or, or and uh, uh, Hungarian uh, is practically um, uh, a mix, probably from the German and, uh, name Angst, which is also in Jungian philosophy like uh, a, a transfer for or, or, or translation for. For, for fear. Cornigerion, of course, uh, is, um, we can probably guess that uh, the root word for it is cornus, which means horn. Uh, so uh, some of the scholars believe that this might be a cipher for the name of the Baphomet. Uh, in, uh, in these rituals, of course, these four demons are summoned first uh, by uh, the powers of, of, of great kings of hell uh, Lucifer, Astaroth and Belzebub is uh, summoned first and these uh, demons are, are called uh, later on to consecrate the, the human skull very interesting is also the way how these uh, demons are being summoned and uh, I have decided to uh, to read uh, this uh, really poetic text for you. Um, uh, it's written in uh, original, is in German, but there is an English text, so I will go with the English translation for you. So I probably I shouldn't be saying this aloud, but uh, I will be forgiven, I hope, by the higher powers of Lucifer. So let's start. Oh, you Cortornifer. O oh, you for Fornifer, O oh, you Hungarian, O oh, you Cornigarian, I conjure your names in the name of the eternal living and true God, and in the name of your great prince, may you appear quickly, and may you answer to my questions quickly and truthfully, and may you fulfill my desire perfectly. I conjure you, Cortonifer, for Fornifer, and Garion, and Cornigarian, by the virtues of the true and living God, and by the angelic virtues, and by the throne of the divine majesty, and by the consuming fire, and by the potent name of the Almighty God, and by these names, O Elohim, Elohi, Adonai, Sadai, Et you, Union, Pantheon, Toakon, Tetragrammaton, Messias, Sother, Emmanuel, Principatus et Postestas Primenus, Gebaton, and by other names which have to remain unmentioned, and by the head of a black prince, and by the crown on his head, and by his right hand in which he holds the spectre, and by the throne in which the mighty rules and governs, and by the holy baptism of this head, I conjure you to quickly come into this head and truthfully answer to my question and to diligently do as I will. So uh, we can see, clearly see that uh, this is written by the clergy. They command these demons through the power of the uh, Hebrew god, Tetragrammaton. Uh, this is uh, through 
medieval uh, medieval document. Later on, of course, when the school is uh, consecrated, uh, it is uh, there is also a procedure what should be done with the skull. So I will read also that one. <laughs> it's really nice. Take an old human skull, wash it in pure water for three nights, wrap it in a clean piece of cloth, go to a meeting of the three roads and write these names on its forehead. Mpuak Sariak Lucifer. Then take a rib from a hanged man, make a hoop with it, place the skin of a black cat inside the hoop, put the skull over the skin and recite these words. I conjure you, names that are written on the skull forehead, show me and tell me the truth regarding whatever question I may ask. Then leave the school and go in peace. And when the rooster start growing, come back and take it. You must keep it secret from everybody. When you want to ask it, fast for three days. Do not taste even bread and water. Ask it during night and it will answer anything you want. Well, to not drink for three days, I think this is this is this is really hard, uh, but uh, of course it will bring you to the state uh, that uh, and also with these types of rituals that you will perform, uh, I think it might bring you success. Why am I mentioning this long ritual? I just want to say that uh, the way these traditionalist, these traditionalist forms that were done uh, by our ancestors are really full of belief. Now a lot of uh, adepts uh, try to uh, light a candle and say a simple end and think that, uh, uh, that the reality will change itself. Uh, you have to be really through uh, in your rituals. It doesn't mean that you have to follow and say the name of the gods, but uh, or the or the Hebrew god. But with necromantic rituals, you have to be always uh, prepared beforehand to go through these cleaning processes and so on. Uh, very famous. Uh, alchemists and magis in the in the Renaissance times were uh, John Dee and Edward Kelly. Uh, they also uh, worked and did a lot of uh, great uh, oper magical operations also in the city of Prague, where I currently live. And uh, they are known uh, to uh, visit uh, uh, the Jewish graveyards. Uh, and uh, cemeteries and were trying to uh, summon uh, the spirits of the dead. Uh, speaking about my practice of ktonic uh, energies and how I worked uh, with them, uh, there are other good books like modern contemporary books, uh, for example, I will show it in the link, uh, the, the very nice one is a book called The Necromancer. Uh, it was received, released by uh, Balg uh, Productions. I, I do not read many pro uh, products from them, but uh, uh, this one is one of the uh, interesting ones. Uh, what would be also nice to say about uh, these uh, old rites or, or these this, uh, necromantic workings with the underworld uh, in uh, Jewish uh, culture and uh, mostly in, in Kabbalah and in Zohar, there is a mentioning of so-called Sheol means underworld, a place uh, of darkness where the death go. Uh, mm, it is a place of silence uh, where the spirits of the dead remain. Uh, in the Luciferian uh, tradition, uh, we uh, identify Sheol as a pit of dead, uh, and uh, it is also a place which uh, where probably is told that the Belial 
resides and he is the master of this. Um, there are so many uh, sources about Shell and underground, uh, underworld. Uh, Shell can be also compared with the Greek uh, Hades. It's, it's also the, the world for Greek underworld. Uh, why I'm mentioning this? Uh, when I started to work with Belial, uh, I did not know much about this, but uh, the later visions that I had with him was that I am in a place of absolute darkness. There was only, there were no, uh, no, no, no forests, nothing. It was only dust and uh, the sky were utterly black and uh, I was going through this plane of utter desolation and uh, this name Sheol came into my mind and uh, in these visions, in this astral traveling I saw shadows, hundreds, thousands of shadows, they were all around me and I remember it still. They were like not uh, aggressive, or they were just standing and watching me. And uh, uh, I, I went through this plane. <laughs> so it's 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 told that uh, really in this shell, all uh, no one no one who is dead can uh, go away. Only those that are living like uh, might uh, visit shell and might return back. It's similar with these legends of Hades. But uh, if you are dead, you are there. And uh, maybe only necromantic ritual can uh, help uh, the dead uh, sometimes to, to communicate with you. That's why uh, we say that dead are, might be hungry because this, this, uh, this uh, ritual can help them to be relieved from this plane of uh, where nothing else exists. Uh, that's why also these rituals are considered dangerous. Uh, uh, many people try to have uh, some kind of connections with uh, their uh, relatives. Uh, after death, um, uh, which is uh, considered uh, standard uh, practice that these, these uh, uh, your relatives uh, that already passed away might be considered as guardians. But uh, there might be that that uh, just want to stay in the, in the, in the material area, uh, area and they just don't want to leave you. Uh, but now I'm touching maybe subject of soul and different types of uh, uh, soul essences. Uh, Origen uh, spoke a lot about this in his book about the origins of souls or Origenes. Or of course uh, Egyptian uh, magic uh, describes a lot about this and this is maybe the topic for, for, other, uh, for other day. So uh, this was uh, just a brief overview of the uh, origins of uh, necromancy. Uh, we spoke a little bit about these necromantic rites. And uh, if you are interested to learn more or just uh, speak about the topic, let me know in the comments. And uh, thank you very much for watching. Have a great day as always.